It's been a great privilege for us to be with you. Uh, the assessment team that we had included uh, Brad Kittle, who is the cluster leader for your church. And so Brad and I uh, handled this. Usually the bishop is involved, but he had some other duties this weekend that he could not be here. Uh, I hate to do it this way, but uh, what we've done is printed a report, and I'd just like to read through this, and then I'll, I'll entertain questions about any procedures or that kind of thing that we did. What we do throughout the process is we meet with staff and key leaders, and then as we do our focus group is listen for the five greatest strengths, the five greatest concern areas or challenge areas that, that people share with us. And then we have prescriptions that are dated and given responsibility to, to someone uh, that will help, in our opinion, help move things ahead uh, in the life of your church. And so uh, there's more that we heard that we took the top five uh, strengths, five challenge areas, and then uh, the prescriptions. So, uh, let me just read through this with you. Uh, the, the consulting team, I uh, want to thank the leadership team and the congregation for the opportunity to partner with you in conducting this consultation. The leaders have been forthright and open in sharing the information we needed to conduct our work. Our goal when the consultation is over is that this congregation will be more effective in fulfilling the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, as given to his church. Some of the greatest strengths that we've heard as we talked with folks. That you are a caring, friendly church. It's clear that there's a sense of and, and highly, had value, uh, highly held value of caring for people in tangible ways. Uh, doing meals, uh, fellowship times, helping to meet the needs of people are highly valued activities for this congregation. Making people feel welcomed and at home in services was also seen as valuable by the group. And so um, you're very warm, uh, caring, and, and uh, want to make people feel welcomed. Second, the pastor. Um, and, and I want to clarify a statement that we have in here about him. Pastor Dunn is seen as an excellent preacher teacher who keeps the congregation focused on the scriptures. Now the next sentence he was reading along and he stopped a little short, so I'll read it the way he said it and then I'll read it the way it was intended. He's also seen as a servant who is not too good. <laughs> and his eye kind of stopped there for a moment. And let me read it as it's meant. He's also seen as a servant who's not too good to hop in and do work with others on projects. He's one of the guys when helping with projects and, and it's not so. That was a positive thing, Pastor, and so we have seen as positive. A loyal, committed core. It was expressed that the church has a very loyal, committed core of people. If asked, they will help or give, and we'll get the work done uh, to achieve things. The worship experience was seen as meaningful and contributes to setting the atmosphere for hearing the scriptures taught. The leader and, and team are greatly appreciated by the congregation. And as far as your children's area and, and youth, the great place for kids. There's a strong intentionality to minister to the children and youth on both Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And the number of those, by the way, is expanding, which is exciting. It's understood that if you reach the children, you will reach their families, which is a trend today. As one person said, this is a great place to raise your children. And so uh, we commend those that are involved in the area of children and youth. Now, some of the challenge areas. Communication, and this is a common one amongst many churches, but it is clear that there's a need to improve levels of communication in the life of the church. This was reflected in communication among staff, between those involved in various ministries, and to a greater extent, communication of information to the congregation as a whole. That does not mean that there's no communication, only that there's evidence of breakdowns in that system, and so it's a need to improve that. Assimilation. Assimilation, let me explain the word. We use the term assimilation to talk about the idea of if I were new to your church today, if Pam and I were visiting, and we came here for the first time, we just moved to Finley, and we didn't know Jesus, how do you walk me from being somebody that's kind of seeking out what it means to be a believer in Jesus and attending your church, and I came this morning, through the whole process of where you help me come to know who Jesus is, to where I start growing and what it means to be a disciple, to where I'm involved in the life of the church and I'm helping to reach other people. That whole process of getting somebody integrated into the life of your church is what we call assimilation. Uh, if you like the Star Trek movies, the Borg assimilated people. You became part of the collective. You don't know what I'm talking about, so I'll just move on, okay? But we get assimilated in the life of the church, okay? There is evidence that there's no comprehensive plan right now of walking with people through a process of becoming assimilated in the life of the church. 
While some activities are being done to work with other believers, there's not a strategic plan of how to move someone from being a new believer to being a fully devoted follower of Christ. And so that's an issue. <coughs> strategic planning. While spontaneity can be good, it seems that there's little strategic planning and goal setting currently being done in the life of the church. This can lead to perceptions of a haphazard approach in fulfilling the mission. This also seems to contribute to issues of recruitment and involvement of people in ministry as well as missed opportunities for training and leadership development. And, and so the, the idea of being a little bit more strategic and, and looking at ahead and, and planning things. Excellence. There was an expressed desire reflected in several comments to raise the perceived level of excellence in the church. Examples involved the flow of and technical glitches in the worship services, quality of worship materials, and the desire to do uh, needed work to a higher quality the first time rather than more cheaply. Sometimes we can hurt ourselves by doing things cheaply instead of doing it right the first time and, and you can save yourself more. So raising the level of excellence. Your location or your facility. There's a common agreement that the location of the church can or will limit the growth of the congregation. Not everybody agrees with that. They believe that if you, if you have something going on here, people will come. And I agree with that too. But every facility and every location can have its limitations. And certainly if you pack this place out a couple times on a Sunday morning, parking becomes an issue and then what do you do after that? Um, so eventually it will become a problem. The age and nature of the facility itself also presents some challenges. And the flooding that you all have had and those kind of things, there's, there's some challenges that, that every place does have and you have it here. The prescriptions now that follow, you will find, go directly tied into the five challenge areas. So number one goes with the number one challenge. Number two goes with the number two challenge. The pastor, together with his staff and key leaders, must develop a systematic plan of communication with the congregation. The development of this plan should include reviewing the best means of communicating to the group, the establishment of regular staff meetings to review things that need communicated to the congregation and also increase communication among the staff, and regular communication with the leaders and those involved with ministry <coughs> segments, the various areas of the ministry. This plan should be developed and implemented by April 1, 2009. We're just suggesting you need to take a look at how you communicate, and the pastor, the leadership team, the staff need to review all that and get a good plan, an ongoing plan that's reviewed on a regular basis, how we communicate. Now, I'm wise enough to know that you could have overhead announcements, verbally say something, have it in a bulletin, put it in your newsletter, and you will still have people that say, I never heard a thing about that. But the idea is, do we have systems down that we are trying to communicate, and then the responsibility is back on the person to hear, okay? But uh, increasing communication. The second one. The pastor and staff should develop a comprehensive plan of assimilation. This plan should be submitted to the leadership team for review and refining by May 31st, 2009. This plan should be implemented by fall 2009. It takes time to figure out what are the steps we're going to walk through with people. And then you figure out what you'll do in each of those step areas. So it takes some time to develop this, but the idea is that by fall, you will clearly know as you start your next ministry season how we're going to walk people through that. And so uh, we're, we're asking that that be done. Third, the pastor along with the staff and leaders need to begin a uh, process of strategic planning for the church's ministry. That plan should include, but is not limited to, a review of all ministries and their value to fulfilling the vision, a system of ongoing leadership development and training, and an annual ministry plan that is intentional. In other words, begin to say, over this next year, here's what we're going to try to accomplish that will help us fulfill our mission. Not just as we go along, oh, that's a good idea, let's do this. Or that's good, let's try this. We need to be much more intentional. And so, um, the, we put a, a plan together. That initial plan should be developed and prepared by August and implemented in September. Again, as you start your small <coughs> ministry, that you know that over the next months, Here's where we're going to walk through with the scriptures. Here's the things we're going to try to accomplish in our ministry this year and, and put a comprehensive plan together. 